So some of the preliminary findings of the SALTFOR study, uh, and we've got the article on www.life-enthusiast.com, search SALTFOR study, I'm sure you'll find it, was with cancer, uh, people that used chemotherapy and took 30 grams of sulfur, would that be two shots of sulfur? Or? That would be six teaspoons, a full ounce. Six, 60 spoons. So this uh, is three times as much as what I proposed for it. Right. Now. The yeah. chemo had no side effects. There was no hair loss, no nausea, no diarrhea. Mm -hmm. And their oncologist reported a great reduction in cancer cells. Lymphomas right. also responded to sulfur with decreased pain and size of tumors. So, I mean, you have to wonder why the cancer ward just doesn't have bottles and bottles and bottles of sulfur and pouring it down everybody's throats. Well, I'll explain that. This costs $20 for 20 ounces or $100 for a gallon. Seven pounds of this you can buy from us for 100 bucks. Uh, a tour of chemo is $10,000. So mm -hmm. the oncologist is just simply motivated to sell you the expensive stuff. Okay, so with arthritis, osteoarthritis, osteoporosis, People just said they had less pain, increased mobility, straightening yeah, of it, fingers. It will shrink the swollen, yeah, sorry, Scott. It will shrink swollen joints. It will improve uh, flexibility. It's yeah, healing to the tendons, ligaments, joints, cartilage, all of that. And to talk to the uh, heart attack part, because I mentioned cancer and heart attack, and one is one and two, and one is one and three. Cardiovascularly, it yeah. regenerated blood, blood vessels. It yes. re reduced scar tissue, which is really important. Yeah. High blood pressure came down, and uh, it broke up calcium plaque in arteries, which is, of course, what causes it blood not to go, right? Clogging, yeah. Clogging. Then, course, then there's the uh, uh, diabetes, you know, because. Uh, it uh, helps with hormonal and and um, helps you produce insulin. Yeah, and, and the amino acids from metabol meta metab metab <laughs> metabolizing <laughs> blah, 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 heart carbohydrates. Well, so when uh, you eat the carbohydrates, your body's got to do something with it. If you don't have sulfur, it's not going to do very much with it. Right. This this was this is another way of saying the same thing as in conversion of food into energy. That's what this is. The sulfur helps your body to turn stuff you eat into energy you want to have. And, of course, when the conversion is poor, the, the starches or the glucose stays in circulation and uh, you have diabetes. Next one we want to bring up is dear to my heart because, as you know, uh, Martin, there may be people watching this don't know, my liver stopped. Yeah. And uh, so, one participant in the sulfur study regenerated his liver after suffering 25 years of hepatitis C, which is the worst hepatitis there is, I think. And he took uh, two tablespoons of sulfur twice a day for 15 months. So this would be, you know, taking six teaspoons. That's what two tablespoons equal. So. 60 grams, you mean? 30 grams. Yeah. 30 grams, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. So I'm, I'm going to be, I have some, and I've tried it a couple <laughs> times. And, uh, but you see, you never told me about the shot, right? Like, I had it in a glass like this big, and wow. then I would oh. It was terrible, but I can make a shot, throw it down, and then, like you said, just have some juice or water or lemon water or whatever you want. Yeah, just wash it down. Smoothie, wash coffee, wash it down.
The next one on the list is parasites. So how would sulfur affect parasites? Uh, I think it has to do with the uh, lining. I think it has to do with the production of the mucus uh, layer and uh, just uh, increasing the resilience of the, uh, the tissues. Like it's sort of like being less friendly. You know, when you see parasite, when you see pestilence in fields, the pests attack crops that are weak. That's okay. true. Like I can, all, one of my earliest memories on the farm with my uncle was, it was a wheat farm. So, I mean, it was just seeds of, of wheat, right? And we're at one corner of a section and the weed is all like, it's perfect. It's, it's green. It's not ready for harvest or anything like that. And I look down and there's a little clump of, of wheat that's sort of looking ugly, fallen over, and it's just being hammered by ants. And I looked at all the other wheat around it and I thought, wow, like those ants are going after that wheat. And it was kind of like, there's two ways of looking at it, right? One was the ants decided to pick on one healthy stalk of wheat and hammer it until they got it. Or two, this particular stalk of wheat, for whatever reason, got damaged. And the ants are like the garbage collectors and they're cleaning up. Yes. Yeah. So I think it's number two more than number one. Right. It's always like that with pests. So likewise with the parasites, if your immune system is strong, if your defenses are vigorous, then they don't find it as easy to, uh, to nest in, to connect. When my sister was growing up, she had, and I'm talking now in the 12 to 16 year old range, she suffered a lot from migraines and headaches. Yes. And, and it never occurred to me, I mean, I never noticed this before, that uh, the sulfur could be a reason for that. Um, it could. Well, you know, a migraine is an inflammatory event. And of course, uh, 12 to 16, that's the uh, onset of uh, puberty, hormonal changes. That's, you know, women are complicated uh, creatures. And each of these events, which is... Uh, puberty or onset of menstruation and then pregnancy because with every pregnancy first the menstruation stops and then after the pregnancy it has to start again and then finally at the end of the menstruation you know the parent of the menopause all of these things essentially change women from being more like a man who doesn't menstruate to being back to a woman who does and so it's it's complicated and it causes or it's fraught with the possibility for for trouble and that's why you see uh, some type of illnesses are more common with women and migraine is definitely one of those and uh, and so is fibromyalgia anyway yeah. so the we sulfur that in our groups don't we yeah so to tie it back together the sulfur then of course is uh, helping this because it helps the immune system and helps the connective tissue and all of the other bits that are involved in this complex dance of health versus not health. Well, what about... Um focus or hyperactivity, depression, mood swings, ADD, all those sort of... uh... Well, and so the ADD is more common in boys, right? The hyperactivity is more common in boys. And that's that's how their organism deals with or responds to these, um, especially autism, which is on the spectrum, or the autistic spectrum includes anything from ADD through Asperger's to out and out, just massive trouble. All of that is includes or is predicated on the health of the muco- mucosal linings in the gut. So if we have a healthy gut that's well able to defend itself against uh, external influences, 
you can maintain health. But as soon as the microbial terrain caves in and the uh, the permeability sets in, leaky gut essentially equals leaky brain. And so whatever's going down in the gut that's not right will affect the brain. And you, you have this process called demyelin, or my, I can't even say it, myelinization, meaning that the myelin sheath of the nerves is getting damaged. And so we have issues in uh, motor control, and it also can happen in the brain, where we start having issues with ability to choose, ability to focus. It's, to an autistic person, it seems as though you were playing five radio stations at the same volume at the same time. It's really difficult for them to choose what to focus on. Like the regular brain is able to just direct its attention on something. Like you could pick the one conversation in a busy cocktail hour somewhere and stay with it. But for them, that's a near impossibility. And that's why you see them uh, trying to distract themselves with some body ticks or covering their ears, closing their eyes, humming to themselves and, and worse. Anyway, I'm just getting into a sidebar here. Um, sulfur helps the gut, which then helps the brain. All right. Well, I think uh, I think that sums it up. We've covered all the major diseases. We've covered all the major chronic uh, problems people have. And if you don't have enough sulfur in your diet, maybe this is one of the areas that you should be taking a really strong look at. So, Martin, before uh, we wrap it up, have you got any any last comments you want to leave us with? Um, this is one of the basic things. It's very affordable. And it's underreported and not, not well known. And it's, it's one of the most wonderful things. You can uh, ask me more questions if you want. You can find us at www.life-enthusiast.com and by phone at 866-543-3388. Thank you for listening. Thank you, everybody. Appreciate you a lot. You've been watching the Life Enthusiast online radio and TV network, restoring vitality to you and the planet. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.